I'm always gonna keep it true. Tell you what I'm gonna do. The sky's the limit, that's why I'm counting on you. Coming up on this edition of Titans All Access, the Titans are rested after the team's bye and ready to go for the final five weeks of the regular season. We'll preview Sunday's matchup against the Jaguars with general manager John Robinson. Inside linebacker David Long Jr. is making a name for himself. Learn just who he is in this week's Nissan Insider. And Derrick Henry is having an impact off the football field that is deserving of a huge honor. All of that and much more as Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry, sacked! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio at Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We are rested and raring to go for the final five weeks of the regular season. Mike Keith, December football is the greatest football of the whole year. I can't believe it's finally here. It is the most wonderful time of the year. Oh, it sure is. It indeed is. And it's also the time where the Tennessee Titans present Mr. Football Awards to the top high school players in the state. During the course of this edition of Titans All Access, you will get a chance to meet the young men named a Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winner for 2021. Now, Mike Keith, this is something that we're involved in every single year. It's such a big deal, but why? Why does the organization invest in this event so much? Promoting football. That's really what it comes down to is we want to support the TSSAA, but we want to support the high schools. We want to support the coaches, support the boys, support the support staff, <laughs> everybody involved in football. It's a great game and we want to promote it and we do that through things like sponsoring Mr. Football, which we have just done for the 15th year. And being involved in communities and things that matter to communities, nothing new for the Tennessee Titans, Amy. And something you and I are proud of is a lot of our colleagues with the Titans have been out and about everywhere in 2021, helping people in all parts of the state. Oh my goodness. And it's in every way you could think of, whether it's clothing drives, it's food drives, it's disaster relief when some of the terrible things happen to Middle Tennessee, especially weather-wise, tornadoes, floods, those kinds of things. There's so much to get involved in. There's so many different ways to help out this community. And the Titans are really putting an emphasis on it now more than ever before to send our staff out and give them the ability to say, you know what, just go do whatever you feel is best and really get involved in Nashville and the surrounding areas. Titans players have always done a great job out in the communities and the ones who do the best jobs win the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award from the ball club. All 32 teams give out that award. And this year, the recipient, well, the king. Oh my gosh, it's Derrick Henry. And we were able to be there when he was told that he was receiving this award. You guys are gonna wanna see this, it's pretty great. All right, let's see. Derrick, to many, you are a Tennessee Titan football player, but to the Boys and Girls Club of Middle Tennessee, you are family. Much like the uncle that all the kids look forward to seeing at the family engagements. You don't know this, but some of our club kids call you Uncle D. <laughs> For our youth to give you this title speaks to your character and how personable and relatable you are to our youth. You have supported us in multiple engagements to include providing school supplies and backpacks for our school supply initiative, hosting co-ed football camps, donating gift cards, shoes, and other gifts for our gift of joy holiday wishes and back to school shopping trips. Boys and Girls Club is sincerely grateful for all of your investments, uplifting messages, and appreciates your emphasis on academics. Derek, your demeanor embodies that you are a proud club kid who has been faithful and consistent with your contributions to the Boys and Girls Club of Middle Tennessee, and we are thankful. We appreciate all that you do for us, but especially appreciative to the time that you give to our youth. Derek. We just wanted to let you know that you are this year's Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Titans. Oh man, that's cool. That's what's up. That's fine. I like that. 
That's nice. Oh, cool, that's what's up. So cool to see Derrick Henry be a finalist for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Now, there are 32 of them. The winner will be announced at NFL Honors, so Super Bowl week. Go King. Go King, go. Hopefully he can get that done. He gets everything else done very well. And what we're going to get done as we go to break is introduce you to some of the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners for 2021. Gentlemen, take it away. Dallin Hayden, Christian Brothers High School. I'm committed to the Ohio State University. Khalid Ganaway, Peabody High School, committed to the University of Tennessee Martin. Justice Chadwick, Tullahoma High School, uncommitted. So I race from Nissan Stadium in the studio to St. Thomas Sports Park to talk ball with General Manager John Robinson. How are you, sir? Good, good. Fresh, recharged, ready good. to roll. What's this organization been working on over the last two weeks since you last played a game? Well, I think it was a good chance for, for our players and our, and our coaches to, to exhale a little bit, you know, take stock of what we had done well over the course, you know, the first part of the season. Some of the guys that have been nicked up a little bit, give those guys a chance to heal and really focus on getting back to, to you know, what we did well previously and emphasize that going into uh, December football. Okay, take that a step further. What does this team need to do better down the stretch? Well, I think first and foremost is take care of the football. We've had a stretch here where, you know, we haven't done such a, a good job of that. You know, we've, we've, that's been a point of emphasis for us all season, but getting back to taking care of the football offensively and conversely creating some turnovers defensively to try to steal an extra possession here and there. All right, offensive question and defensive question. Offense first. You rushed for 270 yards in your last game. Can you build on that? Yeah, I think we can, Mike. You know, both Dontrell and Foreman, you know, they've had, you know, good individual performances for us here over the last stretch. But even looking back at some of those runs, you know, the lines block well, the tight ends and receivers have all made, you know, good blocks to spring those guys. But there's always a block here or a block there where you could just do a little bit more to maybe pop another run, you know, a second run. So I think there's things in there that we can continue to build on. Defensive question, how do you reignite a pass rush that has been outstanding for the majority of this season? I think it's getting back to the detail. You know, it's, it's hard to line up against these offensive linemen in the National Football League you know, one-on-one -on -one and just beat them down after down. They're too big, they're too long. Uh, you've got to focus on the technique, you've got to focus on the details of the rush, of the rush games, you know, the pick, how are you going to come around off of that. So just focusing on the technique, you know, individually and when we run those rush games. You saw Jacksonville in week five, so it will have been nine weeks since you last played them. Have they changed in that time? Well, they've played some good football. You know, the record may not, may, may not show that, but, you know, they're in the top half of the league running the football. You know, Lawrence still is an explosive player. Chenault is extremely dangerous with the football in his hands. Marvin Jones is a big target for those guys. You know, and defensively, they're sending a lot of pressure. They're one of the top pressure teams in the league, and they got some good players on that side of the ball, too. Allen's having a good year for them up front. Miles Jack is year in and year out one of the top backers in the league. And Jenkins, a free agent that they picked up in the offseason, has been around the football a lot in the secondary. All right, I want to back up to this past Tuesday. You and I got to be part of something really special. The Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Awards got to hand them out at Nissan Stadium. For you, as a guy who played football in this state, it's got to be extra special to be involved with the Mr. Football Awards. It is, Mike. You know, it's just such a special day for the players, the coaches that coach these young men, the parents. You know, they've got a lot to be proud of. I know their schools are proud. Uh, of their performance, their teammates are proud of them. So for you know, for us as an organization, and and me particularly, you know, having played here, it was just a special day for us to enjoy with them. Four of your West Tennessee guys won awards. There you go, tighten up. There, <laughs> tighten up indeed. As we go to break after talking ball with John Robinson, presented by Duncan, we get a chance to introduce you to more of our Mr. Football Award winners from 2021. These are the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. My name is Barry Allen Brown, Pericone High School, and I'm committed to the University of Kentucky. Go Wildcats. Steel Haynes, USJ, uncommitted. My name is Destin Wade. I go to Summit High School. I'm committed to the University of Kentucky. Welcome back to Titans All Access and the Bet MGM studio. Now, when you talk about David Long Jr., you usually end up talking about his dad, David Long Sr., who was a heavyweight fighter, but you don't really need to do that anymore. David Long Jr. is making a name for himself on the football field. 
Mike Keith had a chance to sit down with David Long Jr. in this week's Nissan Insider. We back at the crib, ready to pop on. Is there anybody on this roster that has more fun playing football than you? Oh, man, that's a hard question. I'm not sure. I, I love playing football, man, especially out there. Everything that comes with it, the competition, you know, the, the trash talk, uh, all that, you know, plays a part. I love it. You even like practice, it looks like. Yeah, um, I just you know when we, you know, we get better. That's where I can, you know, we form into a team, you know, so. That's how we get the chemistry, and that's how, you know, we play off each other. That's practice is a big part for me. How much fun is it being a linebacker for Mike Brave? It's a lot of fun, you know, of course, because he's played, so he has a lot of insight and stuff like that. And he cares, you know, so the little things, you know, even some things I might not notice, you know, he can help me on and help us on. Whenever, you know, he comes to coaches, you know, it's big. So, you know, I take it into account, into my game, you know, how uh, how it helps me. He's extra tough on the linebackers, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, as he should. You know, linebacker is like, you know, most of the quarterback of the defense most of the time, or as it should be. Well, it's a big well, it's a responsibility you know, for us to you know, not only know our job, but know everybody around this job. So we interviewed the rookies a few weeks back, and one of the questions we asked them is, did they know Mike Grable as a football player? And if you can believe this, the majority of the rookie class had no idea he even played football. For real? Does that surprise you? No, not really, <laughs> not really. He was, he was like Monty and Caleb and those guys, and nah, I mean, but as they should, you know, they, they, they know now though. I think they do. Yeah. I, but it was really funny because like, no, nope, never, never heard of him. And pretty good player, you know. Yeah, a pretty good player. <laughs> oh, oh man, yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah. All right, so let me ask you about your first interception at Los Angeles. How shocked were you when the ball came right to you? Oh, I was super shocked. That's why <laughs> when, I, when you see when I got it, I didn't know what to do. Like, I ran straight. I should have scored. I ran straight. I tried to get into the, the end zone as fast as I could, but I didn't know it was two big old linemen right in front of me. If I could go back, I wish I could have, you know, been more agile with it, though. A lot of times when those moments happen on an NFL team, then you have to go back into the room with the guys and you get the business pretty good. Right. Did did they hassle you pretty good about Oh man, I oh. heard it for like five days straight. Like you really ran into the line. You really tried to run him over. <laughs> and I really go back and look at it. Like I, I could have went so many different ways to score. I ran straight down the middle. The next time I know, next time I know what to do. Oh, you'll score next time. All for right, sure. so here, here's the thing about David Long. You've improved every year. I mean, consistently from day one, you have gotten better. Yes, sir. What's allowed you to do that? I would say coaching, taking all the coaching. I think I'm a fast learner, and my want to, my want to be better, you know, plays a bigger role. And I think the chip, the chip on my shoulder, you know, coming into, you know, sixth round, you know, it's a lot that goes into, you know, me wanting to, like KBC has not proved anybody wrong, but, you know, prove myself right. You know, because I know what type of player I can be, and I know what type of player I will be. You know, as long as I'm in this league. So I just think a lot plays into that part of me just wanting to be better and me wanting to show, you know, everybody what type of player I am. Are you on the perfect team for you based on the fact that football is so important to you and you love it so much? Yeah, I think the program, the, you know, the city, it, it all fits me well. I, I'm blessed to you know, be in a situation of Three years straight, I'm 11 wins, you know, playoffs, you know, a lot of people don't get to do that, you know, so I, I feel like I know I landed in the right position, you know, I'm just taking advantage of it. What's the next thing for you to do to take the next step? Just continue to come into my own, you know, once I'm back out there, you know, just continue to de develop into, you know, more of a mature leader, you know, uh, everything that comes with it, you know, just keep on learning and adding to my game, and, you know, just to, you know, not only show the team, but, you know, Everybody else know what type of player I am. For a linebacker, it starts with that GPS to the football. You, yeah. you have to have that, that's an eight. But then what comes next to separate you and make you a great pro linebacker? The mental part. I think just the learning, you know, uh, learning offenses, film room, and 
I, I have the the motor, the physical part, you know, just but me continuing to become a more better mental player and just knowing the offenses, you know, the routes, you know, a lot of stuff that can help me play faster. I think that's what, you know, will continue to help me grow my game. And keep having fun. Keep having fun, that's number one. Still a lot of Titans All Access on the way, including a little recap for those of you who don't remember what happened when the Titans took on the Jacksonville Jaguars the first time around. We'll get you all caught up. Stick around. We welcome you back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Seems like it's been a while since the Titans took on the Jaguars. Well, Mike, it has been. It has it's been. It's a lot of things have happened between then and now. But for those people who don't remember, we've got them covered. Two months ago, October 10th, Titans and the Jags. Amy Wells with a review. Coming off a poor performance against the New York Jets, the Titans needed an early spark in Jacksonville. They got it on the third play of the game. Third down and 10. In the shotgun, Lawrence takes the snap. Feels heat. Steps up, throws, got it complete at the 31. Losing the football is the tight end. The Titans have picked it up with Byard to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Give me a signal, Mr. Official. Touchdown, Titans! The Titans would never trail, although it would be close throughout the first half. Lawrence under center, gives Robinson on the right. Titans stack it up, but second effort gets James Robinson into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville Jaguars. The teams traded touchdowns, and the Titans' lead was 14-13 to when Tennessee went on a 10-point spurt to end the first half. Ryan Tannehill hit Mike Cole Pruitt with a 14-yard touchdown. Tannehill rolling right. Firing man is wide open at the five and walking into the end zone unencumbered. Pruitt, touchdown Titans, they lost it. And Randy Bullock <laughs> added a 34 yard field goal to give the Titans an 11 point halftime lead. Snap, set, kick, good. Tannehill and company carried that momentum into the second half as Tennessee finished a 75 yard drive with a Derrick Henry touchdown run. It looked like the Jags were about to be Titans blown on out. The ball. Gets Henry at right guard to the five, to the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! Derrick Henry! But that didn't happen. Barely over a minute into the fourth quarter, Jacksonville scored to make it a 31-19 game. And then, just over three minutes later, it appeared the Jaguars had scored again on another Trevor Lawrence run. Empty backfield. Lawrence in the shotgun. Lawrence, quarterback draw. Touchdown, Jacksonville. But Lawrence is called down at the one-yard line upon review. He's not in! And Jacksonville chose to go on fourth and goal. From there, any momentum that Jacksonville had was gone. Henry on the left side to the five. Henry to the goal line. Touchdown, Titans! Henry pounded the Jags into submission in the final moment, scoring his third touchdown right after the two-minute warning. Henry rushed for 130 yards on 29 carries. Along with his fumble return for a touchdown, Bayard posted 11 tackles and an interception. The final score from Jacksonville on October 10th, Titans 37, Jaguars 19. It was an odd game. It was, a it was a tougher game than the score indicated at the end, but the Titans are going to need to play better in order to win this week, I think. And that's absolutely possible. And you know what else is possible, Mike Keith? Saying congratulations to our final group of Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. Say congratulations, Mike. Congratulations, Mike. <laughs> Deshaun Bishop, Cars High School. My name is Alexander Broom. I go to Lipscomb Academy and I'm committed to Boston College. Go Eagles! Ty Simpson, Westview High School and I'm committed to the University of Alabama. Roll Tide! My name is Caden Buckles. I go to Alcoa High School and I'm currently not committed. Welcome back to Titans All Access. We have reached the pinnacle of this show, the greatest part, Mike Keith's Keys, brought to you by VisitMyrtleBeach.com. Mike Keith, your keys. As we all think about Myrtle Beach, we would like to hear your keys. 
let's get Harold Landry rolling on the defense. That's a guy who certainly needed the bye. He was dinged up. Harold has 10 sacks. I think he can go on a big run down the stretch. Harold Landry needs to torment the Jacksonville offense with not only his pass rush, but what he does against the run. All right, key number two. Ryan Tannehill getting hot. Let's get the quarterback rolling. He's had a rest. He's got more help back on offense. He's had a chance to look at things. I think Ryan Tannehill is a key to this ballgame, as the quarterback always is, but he needs a sharp game to get it rolling down the stretch for him. So Harold Landry, Ryan Tannehill, two keys. All right, one more key. Play smarter. You know, just play smarter everywhere, whether it be offense, defense, special teams, fewer mental mistakes, fewer penalties, handling emotional situations well. That's Titan football. That's something that the Titans have not done well in recent weeks. Unfortunately, they've got to get back to playing smart Titans football in all three phases. Those three passionate keys presented by VisitMyrtleBeach.com. VisitMyrtleBeach.com is the place to go to plan your trip mm -hmm. to that great place in South Carolina. Yeah, it's the key to a great vacation. It's the key to a great vacation. Well done, Amy Wells. <laughs> Amy Wells and Rhett Bryan with Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Central on your favorite Titans radio station. Kickoff for the Titans and the Jags Sunday at noon from Nissan Stadium. We hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for being with us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.